The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Nadex Options Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Bull Bear, Nadex Options Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. Right now, we have the Dow Industrials up 326. We get the NASDAQ up 121. S&P's up 34. Gold contract down $4 in the 10 cents, trading at 12.31 an ounce. We get silver flat, $14.69. Light sweet crude down 40 cents, $67.17 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year note down nine ticks, 118.24. 30 year bond off a of 13, 139.01, and good old King Dollar. King Dollar's up by 307 ticks, going after the high once again, uh, 96,440. The euro is at 113.71 to one U.S. dollar. The yen is at 112.55 to one U.S. dollar. Well, you know, when we take a look at IBM, IBM, folks, is going to try to basically buy their way out of a downdraft. And uh, let me tell you something. So IBM is buying Red Hat. They're buying it at 63 times earnings. Okay. 63. 63. Everything's, that, what are you doing for me in the future, right? That is, that is a, a monster. That yes. is like a monster. Um, what IBM has done, um, technically out here, is that what's saving it is the highs of the low of 2008. Bottom line is that that's 116.80. You know, we get uh, 315 million shares there, and you can see we got to 118.30. Uh, yeah, we're already four bucks off that low today, though, yeah. right? Pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Well, We'll see how the whole thing shakes out. Uh, Red Hat, uh, the owners of Red Hat are basically uh, happy in a huge way. Uh, they got a 63% premium. Um, big number, man. Quite a number. Um, that ain't Red Hat, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, geez, look at that. It was trading 170 before, too. Interesting. Yeah, that's man. probably why IBM stepped wow. in, right? It's always interesting when those occur, as an IBM says. Yeah. I and bet I they were already in talks of probably acquiring them six months ago. As in, you know, at least thrown around in discussions, right? This doesn't come out of the blue. Right, they right. said, you know, and those discussions get ramped up a little bit as the company you look at just keeps falling in price, as long as nothing changed in the dynamics of that falling price. And what's pretty wild here, folks, is that when IBM came out with their numbers, um, their cloud uh, basically was only growing by 10%. Okay. Which, you know, so the yin and the yang of this inside IBM is that the market basically is saying, well, if you were doing so good, why are you go out and paying 63 times earnings on, yes. on Red Hat? Yeah. And bottom line is that they got to do something because they've been going downtown for such a long period of time. We'll find out in the future um, if it, what, what ends up happening here is this, is that IBM is going to have to absolutely basically purge their own mainframes. And that's, that's, that's where... It, is going to be the real test, okay? Because okay? the legacy system of the mainframes, you know, the cloud is totally different. You don't need the mainframes, and so what they're going to do, they they're calling it a hybrid, yes, okay? A hybrid, and, yeah. and the hybrid is a, is a big deal. There's no doubt because there's plenty of legacy systems out there in the big banks um, that you know they'd all like to morph to the cloud. But the reality is, is that you can't morph there that quick. And we yeah. just we kind of went through this ourselves. Sure. When, we when we just changed, you know, we, we went from a database, uh, an Oracle basically database, into the cloud when we just changed everything. So, but we're a lot smaller. <laughs> and yeah. that was a trip in itself. Definitely. But an IBM, you know, we'll see where it shakes out. Um, you know, the cloud, you can see, is where it's at. But they had to buy their earnings, you know, so we'll see where that baby uh, goes. King Dollar out here, uh, this is going to get intriguing because there's no doubt that King Dollar is trying to get over this high, hasn't been able to make it. Well, it's made it, but it hasn't held. But the longer it stays up here, you know, the more probability that it will get over it. Now, the div divergence is inside the gold market because what we do have is that the gold contract is still strong. The equities last week got hit pretty good, though. They and, did. and what I did want to see, which thus far um, has happened, is this, is that we... If you get the gold report, you know that I wanted to see a basically a lower low out here because of the way that we came down. And we got that this morning. So now all we need is light volume. The GDX got to 1882. 
Um, you know, last week we came down to 1888. You can see that volume, 85 million, man. Um, it was going against 134, but we'll see. If this, is a, if this is a test today with lighter volume, that'll give us a start. Because inside that market, what was so intriguing is that only you had uh, Royal Gold, Franco Nevada, which are streaming companies, they acted all right. But that would make sense because the gold contracts acting all right. The real question is, is that what are the rest of them doing? Sure. Do you know what I mean? Because a couple of them are ABC structures on the way down. So if you're in that market, folks, make sure you keep your stops in. Um, the uh, N NDX 100 this week, we're getting big numbers out, man. I mean, you're gonna, we're going to have numbers all over the place. Uh, the leaders out here today is uh, Workday is up by 6.3%. CERN is up 5.7%. Uh, taken away from it, take two interactives down 2.4. You get Baidu down 1.3. Let's go see when Apple's coming out. Apple's coming out November 1st. Is that yeah. what day is November 1st? That's Thursday, I believe. Thursday, okay. We got Halloween, I believe, is Wednesday night. Okay. Yep, that's correct. And Thursday will be the first. Okay, so that's yeah. that's going to be big numbers. Um, that, and again, that's 4.30, just to put, so the yep. futures trades, we like them sometime. Apple doesn't normally come in in time for that 4.15 futures expiration, so 4.30. Right, and Apple's looking for $61 billion in revenue. Big number, man. 2.78. Yeah. And uh, all the metrics there, man, they're still growing. They like, sure are. In a, in a huge way, no doubt. Um, eight. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I saw today, we've gotten about half of the S&P earnings coming into as of this week opening up. Something like 240 S&P companies this, this have, week, no, no, have already reported. Have already reported, okay. So we're about halfway okay. through the S&P earnings at the start of this week. Okay. Yeah. Some of the high-volume equities out here, you get uh, Ford. Oh, yeah, so uh, the, the car companies are getting a break out here this morning. And what this bump is, is that the, in China, folks, look at this bump. In China, they're thinking, it said uh, they're cutting the taxes in half. Let's see. China's considering a tax cut to revive its flagging. Uh, audible of uh, market, according to people familiar with the matter, lead, lending support to a key industry that's been damaged by ongoing trade war. Car makers uh, surged. Uh, Volkswagen selling just under 40 percent of the vehicles in China last year rose 6.7 percent. So, we'll see. Uh, oh, go ahead. Um, no, you're good. No, do you want to? That's all right. I was just going to scroll down to see if it said anything else, but that's all. Just in terms of what, what, uh, what kind of taxes they do have on there. They're, they're big taxes, evidently. So yeah, to so counteract the slowdown, yeah. having the tax on car purchases to 5% from 10%. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big number, man. Yeah. When you're talking about a, a big purchase, right? And then they talk about, so the measure would apply to cars with engines no bigger than 1.6 liters. So maybe just trying to spur smaller cars, more, right. more energy efficient cars, so forth. And so the spur more manufacturing, because some of these must get manufactured, you know, in sure. that. Uh, yes. So let's see, Apple's up three, Snap, Snap's in trouble, man. Snap's at 625, yep. that's flat. Uh, you get Microsoft up a buck, you get Tesla, Tesla, <laughs> Tesla, man, uh, is swinging some of these short positions, man, and it's pretty intense. So Tesla looks like it's just about running out of steam uh, up at this level, but guess what, folks? In five trading days, you've gone from 252 up to 347. Yeah. You know, you're coming right into where it came off the highs, but that high volume high probably is going to get tested. That's the high volume high when uh, you know Musk is saying, "Okay, I'm going to take you public at 420." Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per buildable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month, per lot, range from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact, that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow Industrial is right now up 322. We get the NASDAQ up 118. S&Ps are up 33. And, folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you're going to see our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He is going to be doing a workshop for all his subscribers. This is going to be uh, tomorrow night, uh, October 30th, 5 to 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Basil's going to be talking about uh, the Chapman Wave tools that helped identify the market's last top and what to expect as we go into 2019. Yeah. How's that? 2019. November starts Thursday, man. We'll be there in no time. So people can go to the front page, sign up for Basil's opening call. Of course, you get his newsletter every single morning. He sent out charts on Saturday and Sunday and Monday this weekend. Great service for sure. And uh, he's going to be talking about the current daily and weekly sell modes and how that plays into kind of the monthly charts. What are the important moving averages? Um, the sectors that are likely to benefit suffer. Dollar gold yields and the VIX volatility, all important topics. And uh, the cash index and what is its function. And so people can visit the front page of TFNN. Get in there for the opening call tomorrow night, 5 till 6.30. Good 90-minute workshop. Basil always works hard, gets that together well. And uh, I look forward to doing that to be a part of that as well tomorrow night. And folks, all of you that you subscribe, you can subscribe for a month, six months, or a year. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So check it out. You get a great newsletter. You're going to have a great workshop. And if you can't make it personally, uh, it will be on your page. So you can go over it as many times as you like. That's right. And uh, there's no doubt that we get volatility uh, in the marketplace. What I suspect what we got going on here is that you get the big, a couple of the big FANG stocks that are going to report. You got the end of the month, so you're going to get some window dressing out here. The real question is going to be, do you make this bounce, and the bounce comes on light volume. And if that's what you have, uh, this little baby is still making its way down into that February 9th high volume swing low. Like if we look at the XLE, the XLE 
basically just about got there, got within a point uh, of it. And I suspect we're going to get a bounce out of that, too. So we get down to uh, 6538. That high volume low is 64.45. You're coming down on a weekly with uh, 117 million versus 155. So we'll see whether that can get a bounce going. The uh, IWM also came right next to it. And this is, if you're a bull, you would have rather it actually get to it because my take is that we're still going to it, uh, but it wants a bounce. So the IWM got to uh, 144.70. It's 142.50. Okay. Uh, we did it with lighter volume, though. We did it 175, 175 million versus 256. You know, so it's, it's hard to, that the first time down, you can't expect to blow that out because the volume is so dramatic at that yeah, particular point. It's a big time in February. Yeah. So we'll see where this whole thing uh, does shake out. I like how the, uh, the gold market is acting right now. Um, you know, that's saying that, you know, we'll see whether that this dollar is going to fail. You know, they're catching a bid, and they're catching a bid after. Let me go look at Great Panther for a second. I hope this went to a lower low, too. Yeah. This is so close, man. Let's see. So we hit 63.5. It did it. Okay. So we'll see where it shakes out, man. Because let me show you something here. One of the, one of the weakest equity that we actually follow is New Gold. And... This is going to be really strange if this is how this is shaken out. What, what happened is with New Gold, right, is that it actually did, when all the rest of them were getting hammered last week, New Gold all of a sudden caught a bid. And it's like, okay, man, you know, don't, I wouldn't be buying this, folks, okay? But this was pretty dramatic. And, and what this had done is that, you know, you, you got down to the lows of 2008. 74 was the low. We got down to 69. And if that's what it's going to do, it's like, oh, man, you know. So we'll see uh, if that was the first one that basically has said, okay, I'm coming back. A lot of the other gold stocks have come back to the breakout area of December of 2016 and January of 2017. Let's go to our man Jim in Palm Harbor. What's going on, brother? Hey, how are you guys this morning? Morning, morning Jim. Good. Yourself? Oh, I'm great. I love the weather right now. Oh, can't beat this weather, it's, man. The weather, folks, is extraordinary down here now. I mean, it's this is when we cherish this whole deal. Now till May, we're in good shape. So we're going to enjoy it. And you know what's so cool, Jim? Isn't the beginning of it is so cool? Because you know you have a stretch of four or five to six months. And because you haven't felt it in six months. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Ex exactly. <laughs> I like it. Uh, my question this morning is uh, uh, the low of Friday... Uh, when you look at it on the RSP, the equal weight for the S&P 500, or if you look at the .SPX, um, the bar we had Friday is getting into the February 9th uh, bar that was below. And I was just wondering, is that an indication? And it did it on high volume, too, on Friday, this last Friday. Uh, it had high volume. And it got down into the low of February 9th bar. And I was just wondering, based on an equal weighting of the S&P 500, if that's a sign that we're very close to that bottom or the test of the February 9th low you, you keep referring to. <laughs> yeah. I, my, my take is that we're going to get there on the cash, too, which is, you know, which is lower. Um, not lower, but, but I understand what you're saying. What, what the, the, when you get this close to it, let, let's say like on the S, on the SPY, it's 252.92, and then we got to 262, so it's 10 bucks off it. You'll get a really good indication this week. And if we bounce on light volume, Jim, what that would mean is that you're building cause to get down into that level. And we'll find out pretty quick, man, because there's going to be good action this week. I mean, I think we've got a bounce going right now. Um, but to me... You know, if we take this, if we take the, the, the cash S&P, we put this on a monthly, you know, you dug into this bar pretty good, you know, but that bar is still, you know, 170 points lower than we are, you know, but we went down to 26.28, that low is uh, 25.32, you know, so, I mean... I think this is, a, to me, this would be a tradable bounce, that's for sure. I mean, I know, you, you know, if you like some equities, just keep a real tight stop on them because 
the way that the oil market went down, the IWM, I don't think they're done. I don't think they're done going down, you know, so. Okay. Yeah. I just I just got curious about that. I was looking at the equal weight on these and what, what the is the symbol of the equal weight? In one? R RSP. RSP. Okay, so let's th let's take a look at this. So, okay, so RSP is the Invesco S and P 500 equal weight ETF. Okay, so we bring this down. And on Friday we had really yeah. high volume. It's like. Oh, this Almost is almost three and a half nine, million or something. Oh, so this okay. So watch this. This is really dangerous. Then this is really cool that you called on this. Okay, so watch what happens here. We came down there with nine point nine million on the weekly. We we're going into ten point five. That's dangerous, man. You know that volume is really close um, to good, hitting a high volume high. Okay, hey, just stay there for a second because we'll we'll talk about this when we come back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now up 325, NASDAQ up 117, S&P's up 35. We'll come right back. Jason Path has just launched his weekly newsletter, The Quantitative Edge, available only at TFNN.com. Right now, you can sign up for Jason's outstanding weekly report, including midweek updates whenever warranted, with a 30-day money-back guarantee included, so you have nothing to risk. Jason develops his trade recommendations by creating an ensemble of predictive and mathematical models trained on data by leveraging a variety of techniques, including market-based computer simulations. Jason then combines these sophisticated predictive and analytical models with deeply researched macro outlooks to identify opportunities in a number of different markets for traders to act on. Whether you're looking to trade futures, equities, commodities like crude oil and gold, forex, or cryptos, Jason covers it all. Sign up for Jason Paff's weekly trading newsletter right now by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the quantitative edge under the newsletters tab. TFNN.com, educating investors. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow right now is down 323. Nasdaq's off. 
They're oh, up. The Dow's up 323. Sorry about that, folks. Dow's up 100. Uh, S NASDAQ's up 109. S&P's are up 33. We're talking about men, Jim from Palm Harbor and uh, RSP. So two different things here is that so the RSP is the S&P 500 equal weighting. That came back to that swing low with too much volume. The, this is what you want to wrap your head around. That, so the RSP is an equal weighting, has a market cap of 14.7 billion. If we go over to the SPY and take a look at this, what you're going to see is that the SPY has a market cap of 250 billion. And the good, the bad, and the ugly of going up or going down, Jim, right, is this, is that as you're going up, the trustee of the S&P 500 has to buy the stocks. As you're going down, they have to sell the stocks. This overwhelms everything. You, you want to keep your eye on the SPY. That's, that's the bottom line, okay? Because, okay. you know, you're, you're, you, the structure is so much larger. I mean, it's, it's huge. So, well, you know... How does the uh, dot uh, SPX relate in that regard? The the SPX is actually the cash, the cash market, and what happens with the this is uh, this is cool. Okay, this is a great question. So what happened years ago, folks, is that when I was first in this market, Tim Wood, right, is one of the best market timers out there, and as he was going through, we were trading a lot together, and what ended up happening is that. He was using the futures at that, that particular point. I kept looking at the cash. I'm saying to myself, you know, you can move the futures. You cannot move the cash until the market is opened. So what ends up happening is this. The cash does not trade. So what ends up happening is as the market opens, everyone is buying or selling the S&P. That is what the cash number is. And what I found, and we both ended up finding, that the cash is a better vehicle to look at because the liquidity is much better. The cash only moves from 9.30 to 4.15 in the afternoon. Right? It's actually 4.10 or something, okay? And that's what the difference is. And that's why we think at this particular point that's more accurate, you well, know, indication. Because it's the 500 different share prices. That's correct. To put things versus, right. you know, you right. put a load in there in terms of a buy order for, you know, the futures of the SPY. It's going to move. It might recalibrate back to, you know, somewhere in line with right. the SPX. But if you want to move the SPX, the cash, you better have orders on 500 different equities That's or at least on all the big ones to really push it. Ex exactly. Not, and, not easily done. Yeah. And what would end up happening is that either before the market or after the market, if, if you're Goldman Sachs, you're Morgan Stanley, you want to move the market. Well, guess what? You have unlimited money. You go into the, the futures, give me 300 contracts either up or down. Well, you're going to move those futures. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it, so that's, that's the gist of how this cash works versus you know, the S&P or anything, or the, or the futures in general. You know, so it's a much more accurate, I would say, number because everything has to be traded simultaneously, you know, when liquidity, so. That's... Okay, let me, I'm trying to get my head around the difference then between the SPX being the actual S&P 500 and the SPY which one do you give more credence to like that? This The SPY intraday, you can definitely pay attention. The SPY number, when the market's open from 9.30 to 4, would correlate directly with the SPX. Directly. Okay. It, it won't prior to it and after it because what also happens there is that the futures can move and will move the SPY before the market open and after the market's closed. Okay. Yeah. Well, that helps me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man, it's always a pleasure talking to you, man. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Okay. You guys, too. Thanks, Thank Jim. You. So, um, Facebook is coming out this week, too. There's going to be a lot of them coming out, evidently. Facebook is uh, the 30th. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 30th. <laughs> and Facebook has been one big mess, folks. We'll see how this uh, shakes out going into, uh, you know, I mean, it has lighter volume down here. You know, it got, it got down to this March low, which is uh, the 149. You're at 148. Well, we'll see if we can get any kind of a bounce. Yep. It, look, it looks to me, I mean, this got monster volume off the highs. Yeah, it's a weekly. You know, this is, 
You know, on a monthly, it doesn't look bad, though. <laughs> look at that. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, we're back to, what's crazy is that we're back to, right, June, July of last year. So yeah. talking about 14, 15, I mean, longer than that, 16, 17 months, a year and a half, just wiped off the table. A um, company like Facebook shouldn't have a year and a half of no stock price appreciation in light of where some other tech companies have gone right. in that last year and right. a half. Right. The likes of Amazon especially, but... Looks like there was a little bit too much upside built into that share price, and then they came out on that last earnings call. So it'll be interesting this one. That's when that last one started. That's when that big fall off started, where they talked about um, the margins were going to dramatically decrease because of the increased need to spend money right. to kind of regulate their own platform that's, that's gone a little haywire. Um, yep. And there, there were big decreases in those margins, if you remember oh, yeah. talking about which translates into earnings, of course. And we're going to have our main Mr. Jason Path on the next segment. And I know the last time we were talking, he was talking about the amount of searches getting rid of uh, coming off Facebook, you know, meaning that he's using that data. How do you get off Facebook? Okay. And so yes. he, saw, he saw a surge in, the, in those going up. So it's sure. going to be intriguing to see um, yeah. how Daily that's active users, up. right, yeah. all that stuff, right. yeah. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at the uh, SMHs. So the SMHs, folks, these babies have been getting destroyed. And it's still, it's still not much. Okay, so you're up a buck 66. You're at 91.35. Um, this is quite a, this is a breakdown of, so this is back in September of 2017. But you, you broke the consolidation Let's see, that's 66 million. Yeah, you broke it with volume. You broke, you came into it with 68. You're doing 66, and then we actually did 49. This is a, this is serious business here, man. Um, so NVDA, NVIDIA gave up like $98 in a month. Went from 292, yeah, it hit 193 Friday. Yeah, called under, all right, why not? <laughs> Crazy. God. That's pretty intense, man. Look at that. Now, it's going to get interesting here, folks. This is, that's a, that's a, it's, it's, yeah, it's really close to a parabolic move. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. If that's not parabolic, what is, right? I mean, you're talking about, I can't even, we're, we're at 25 bucks in the beginning of 2016. In two and a half years, you go from 25 to 300. Yeah. 10 banger. Yeah. Big numbers. Big then, numbers. And then, then back down to 200 in a oh, heartbeat. Two seconds. Coming, coming off that number. So that, no doubt, is big. So how about those Red Sox last night? Oh, I know. World champions. Huge. Congrats to the Red Sox. Yeah, Congrats big. to Boston Nation. Yeah. Gotta love it. Quite a team. Quite Did you a... see how many people they had in L.A.? Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like that, uh, that, that it was all Sox fans out that there. That blew my mind, man. Yeah. I, I was half asleep on the couch. And I woke up a few times, and I, I think I was woken up. Everyone's cheering. I said, yeah. "Oh no, they must have. The Dodgers must have did something." It was the Red Sox. I think, and I was, I was, same reaction. And I was just thinking, you know what? L.A. was demoralized, man. Their fans were just super quiet. You know, they're down three-one yeah. in the series. They knew it was over. They weren't making a peep. Boston fans, they got it done. Crazy, totally. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. We got our man, Mr. Jason Path, coming up next to us. Dow right now is up 238. Nasdaq's up 84. S&P's are up 25. Come right back. So it just Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors.
No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. The Dow right now is up 251. Nasdaq's up 84. S&P's up 25. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Jason Path, as we do each and every Monday at 40 past the hour. Don't forget, folks, Jason kicks us off every trading day right here, 8.30 to 9 o'clock. Morning market kickoff. Outstanding show. He also has a great newsletter, The Quantitative Edge. You can test drive this by coming over to our website at TFNN. Go around the featured content. You can check it out. You get it for six, a month. Six months a year, all with 30-day money-back guarantee. And you can also get into his webinar that he had done on the 25th of October. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? How, How you doing? Jason? Hey. So. Here we go. So where are we going to start? What are, you, uh, what are we going to start with? It's an interesting market this morning. You know, light on earnings. Obviously, the rest of the week sets up for earnings. China sold off. Uh, that's not going to get as much attention as it should because we're getting a bounce in futures. You know, some additional political risk in Europe with Merkel. You know, the, the pound and the, the euro have been under pressure. Merkel stepping back, I think, puts the euro under more pressure. Uh, and then coming back stateside, you got Apple and Facebook. It doesn't get bigger than that yeah. for this week. You've got Exxon at the end of the week, NFPs at the end of the week. So it's interesting to see futures set up, you know, You'd like to see a close above 2700 uh, today if you're long uh, and then you know heading into a really 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 uh, you know action filled week uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out yeah so what are you thinking with Facebook we were just talking about it. I know the last time I was talking with you uh, well not the last time but in general that data was coming in that it seemed like a lot of folks were searching the term like how do I get off Facebook yeah, the thing that the thing that's interesting to me about Facebook, and this is a you know kind of a more of a multi-year deal here, if you compare it to something like Google, you know, Facebook is ultimately an advertising platform. Yes. Period. Uh, advertising metrics should be how we evaluate Facebook. You know, we don't evaluate Google based on monthly active searches or so. Like that's just not a data point in the release that anybody looks at. Somehow Facebook got off track with this, you know, focus on this monthly active user. When you get to two, three billion people, okay. clearly there's going to be a slowing in the growth rate. So I think that, I think the fundamentals look good. It's you know, dominant advertising platform across the world. I think it will continue to be, uh, but I, I think the monthly active users will c come under pressure. And so I think the market's going to have a choice: either we accept lower 
monthly active user growth, which clearly in Twitter's case did not matter. That was down. Revenue was up. Stock went topside. For some reason, that's mattered more to Facebook, even though they've got, you know, 2 billion plus users. So I think over the long term, uh, you know, for Facebook's case, and, you know, I don't have a position in the company, but hopefully that moves to the back because I, I just don't think that's been a, a very important metric. I mean, we should be counting how much money they're making and, uh, you yes. know, they can you know, make a lot. Expenses could be up as well as they've invested a lot in, you know, security and They seem like they still have a PR problem, too. You know? Oh, a huge, huge yeah. sentiment overhang on this stock. Absolutely, no question. So um, it'll be interesting. Uh, they definitely are going to see slower monthly active user growth, no question. We saw that last time. Stock gaps down. That will continue to be a problem. But I think, you know, net profitability and net, you know, revenue is is going to continue to be pretty strong for them. Yeah, I mean, they're still a monster, folks. What what what, what they're looking for this quarter is, let's see. So they're looking for 13.8 billion. And looking for a dollar forty-seven to the bottom line, you know. So not bad. No, that's we'd all love to grow like that. I mean, they're still talking like growth numbers of forty-two to fifty percent per year. Yeah, it's a twenty, you know, twenty-five PE. You know, I, I mean, there, wow. there's a lot of upside there long term. I mean, the sentiment is clearly way down the stock, and I've called it down below one fifty just based on sentiment. But sure. long term, advertising dollars have to go somewhere. You got Google, Facebook, and Amazon. You know, where else are you going to spend your money if you're marketing digitally there's just yeah. nowhere else well, twitter and snap are a minor minor fraction oh yeah i think you know it seems that uh, we'll see where amazon goes but those numbers were impressive with amazon even though they were a small number yes they, they, that growth that, wise that too. growth and that advertising was like pretty intense man you know so. yeah absolutely and there's a more than enough for for them to go around I had a, yes. some questions the other day on amazon you know, they're taking from other channels. Right. You know, they're not cannibalizing each other right now. They're taking from print. They're taking from TV. You know, taking yes. from Comcast. Right. And so there's there's a lot of upside in the digital advertising side of those businesses. No, there's there's no doubt. So, um, well, the the beginning of your um, newsletter this week is burning down the house. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, it was a, a tip of the hat to some '80s music, and from time to time, I'll I go like with an it. '80s song or an '80s movie. <laughs> yeah. The issue right now, and we talked about this a little bit, subscriber event last week, is a lack of liquidity. Yes. And so the the play on words here is, you know, there's a fire. We're going for buckets, and there, there's no water or AKA liquidity. If you look at volumes, we're at you know multi-decade low and trading volumes, um, liquidity, even over last year, and we compared the level of volume and liquidity in the market to when we had the February issue to now, mm -hmm. it's, we're, we've taken a step move down in liquidity and tradable volume just since last February, just yes. a few months ago. What we're seeing, if you look at the VIX today, yeah. and you compare it to the VIX 16 to 17 days after the February 6th event, yes. there's no comparison. It's much higher. Right. Why? There's not enough liquidity to soothe and smooth the market, not nearly the liquidity in the market that there was just last February. We can look at this in obje objectively with data. And so part of my thesis is we're, we're, this volatility is going to persist, and it's much more... You know, we look at technical levels, we talk about sentiment, and that's important. But if there's just not enough volume and liquidity right. at the stretched levels of market capitalization we have today, it, there's just there's just not enough to, to calm trouble. it down. Right. No, that's Bid trouble. ask will continue to widen. There's not enough. You turn around to unload a position, there's nobody there. Right. Right. So, you know, specifically, folks, is that when the VIX is higher, of course, which it still is, the insurance is higher and most times that these option traders seem to be more consistent than the actual basis as to you know where the volatility is meaning it doesn't it doesn't and it doesn't mean that you got to go down because it can go both ways but most of the time volatility is you're going downtown yeah you know they're evaluating I mean? that that's risk right. very well yeah yeah, yeah. That's yeah right. you know I, I was Tommy was showing me that chart you had uh, inside the uh, your, your webinar, that's pretty impressive, man. I was showing yeah. him, Jason, that chart that I had commented on at yeah. the end of the webinar yeah. in terms of the market capitalization of the entire market versus the capitalization of the shares that's being right. traded. The ratio. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, like back in the early 2000s, the ratio was about 5% of market cap to, to volume in the market. Now we're down below 1%. So what that means is market cap has become exponentially stretched volatility is exponentially contracted there's there's nowhere for that movie to end other than you have no margin for error you get a few cracks in the foundation 
and and you have a really rocky market for protracted periods of time and i think we're i think we're in the midst of seeing that right now if if i had any bet to place right now it's on higher volatility for longer right what we had in february we had we had the largest spike that we've seen in the vix and we had the largest fastest decrease the, the vix came down almost overnight off that february 5th yes. high right that's not happening right now we're 10% higher 16 days out right. and i think that's that's serious change that we'll all have to adjust to as traders. Yeah, right. it's like you don't have to be a data genius, right, to understand that there's not as much volume of shares in terms right. of volume like the the value of those shares being traded. So what happens when things really start to go if they go haywire? Yeah. Wait, um, you know, it's always easy to buy something, not try to sell it. Right. You know, that's right. that's, that's right. you know, right. Yeah, on one right. of those mornings where just right. everything is going on. Right. That's right. And now we're yeah. looking at your event risk radar. Yeah, I mean, I th it's certainly been a fluid environment from a global macro risk perspective lately, but I think it actually cools down the next couple of months. Obviously, this Merkel situation in Germany heats up, but it could be a little cooler in global macro over the next few months compared to what we've seen. Sure. Folks, every trading day, right, 8.30 right here. Check out his newsletter, Quantitative Edge, right on the front page of TFNN. Jason, have a great one, safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Yes, can't wait. Thank Thanks, you. Jason. Stay right there, folks. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is up at 283. You get the Nasdaq up 89. S&Ps are up uh, 27. And uh, bottom line is that uh, we'll see where this uh, baby shakes out. So uh, it's a little bit early for volume-wise. But if we take a look at the SPY, you get the SPY 
up on 29 a million, which is not bad. You know, you, you're gonna you're gonna win. Well, it's, it's not great either. Um, you, you're coming into 274 million, so I don't expect you're gonna get anything like that. But we'll see um, if, in fact, uh, it can hold price. You know, the S&P just gave up a few points uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, small caps look like they're still going to lead on the way down. You know, small caps, IWM, this is a contraction of volume in a big way. Um, we're only at 8.8 uh, 8 million. How about, can we jump to Bitcoin? Yes. Nothing too oh, dramatic, yeah. but down about $150. So oh, is it's it? 62 and change. Um, XBT. Still sitting relatively, but we had been hovering around 64, 65. You can see even oh. on that chart, you know, we had two solid weeks of almost call it no movement. Um, yep. Right? And even you just put it on a weekly. So again, I just throw it back on a daily just to put a, put it on a year. It's so dangerous really down, down here. I mean, that's yep. where, you know, we're going back to October 16th. You know, we just traded from 64 to 66 occasionally. Yep. And that shit down today, 62.11, um, which, yeah, we hadn't seen since October 15th, a couple weeks. And, and like we always say, man, it'd be interesting to see if we start floating with these levels oh. right around 6,000. Yep. Um, you know, you're going back to June, the last time we were kind of below, below 6,000. We had... Uh, that's saying no, it's not tracking but that's all right but nonetheless it, I kind of woke up I hadn't seen Bitcoin move two hundred dollars in, in a couple weeks yeah that's uh, six thousand seventy one yes yeah. it's, it's dangerous down here no yeah. doubt stay right there folks we got fast market coming up by uh, TD Ameritrade then our man Mr. Basil Chapman Steve Rhodes Dave White we'll be back this afternoon thanks pal thanks man we'll go get them folks Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.